let's picture a suspension bridge. Okay, for a second. Now, a suspension bridge is designed for all elements to deal with the elements, whether it's water, wind, it's able to move and shift to make it a stronger structure as opposed to being rigid and not being able to move, which tends to fall apart easier from any outside force of pressure. What picture, now, with a suspension bridge, you have steel cables that hold or attach to steel girders. Now, if you have too much tension on those steel cables and it's pulling up on maybe, say, just one, vert, one girder, it's going to cause an in, uh, uh, a problem with the structure the integrity of the bridge, will it not? Right. Um, and the same thing is if that cable is too loose and there's not enough tension on the girder and the girder's hanging loose, again, we have an, uh, uh, a problem with the structure, the integrity of the structure. And there can be problems throughout the whole. Now there's going to be more stress on other areas of the bridge trying to maintain itself, and it's going to cause problems throughout. Eventually, a breakdown. Now, what substitutes those steel girt, those steel cables, for your fascia and your muscle? Um, and what have those girders be substituted as your bones? So you have the fascia holding you together, as steel cables do. Hold. Uh, to the girders, they hold the fascia holds you to your bones. So if you have too much tension and not a restriction, an adhesion, a pull somewhere within that fascia, it's putting an enormous amount of pull and pressure on the bones, which is basically pulling them out of place. That's how you get supplication or um, you know herniated discs or uh, bulging discs or, ver or vertebrae out of place mm -hmm. because the fascia, which eventually is the muscle, are pulling into the tendons, into the ligaments, is pulling everything out of place. And that pull from one area is affecting the whole body. So, and at the same time, if it's too lax, if they get someone who's hyper uh, mobile, or for those who don't understand that, where it would be people who are not need and can you know, bend, dumpy people who can bend themselves in every which way, which doesn't seem natural. <laughs> right. um, that's not good either, because there needs to be a certain amount of tension on those bones that the bones stay in place. As much as too much tension will pull it out, not enough will not keep it where it's supposed to be so everything functions properly. Mm -hmm. So that's more about with the fascia, what everything has to be an equal pressure back and forth and push-pull. You need a balance and equilibrium throughout the body the same way the bridge does to maintain itself and function. Right. So hey, and uh, I've heard you give great examples of, of clients you've seen, specifically, um, I remember one about, uh, you've had a client who had had for example, a C-section, and what, what that scar tissue did because it injured oh. the fascia and, and how it affected someplace else in the body, if you could just talk, because that's sure. a good example of the tensegrity thing. Oh, yeah, the, the C-section is a great example. Uh, a lot of women complain of lower back pain. And if a client walks in, a female, and she's had kids, she's complaining of lower back pain, or maybe her hip flexors are really, really tight, her pelvis seems to be very tilted. Um, the first thing I do is I ask if you've had a C-section because a C-section basically, even though the scar looks like nothing, you've got an excellent surgeon or a plastic surgeon and the scar is not visible on the surface, remember we're layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of tissue. And that tissue is supposed to be able to move and slip and slide in every which way as we move and function. But if you have a restriction, say in the front of your abdomen that's not allowing the tissue to move, well, that restriction is going to pull all the way around to the back and could be causing the back pain. Or it could be going straight through from the belly, from the C-section, all the way through into, say, the vertebrae in the back. Or the scar tissue could be traveling. Because what happens is when scar tissue is stuck, it continues to stick and spread over the years and attach to other areas and create holes and imbalances which forces the body to compensate. Because that's what our body does. It's an amazing compensatory machine. All it wants is to have us moving forward and functioning, and it will steal from Peter to take off and make sure that we continue to function and continually, every time it does that, it sets up more problems and more issues. Right. Yeah. The other, the other um, illustration I've seen you do of it was, um, you know, uh, the, shirt. the shirt. Here's what we're going to tell everybody to do. Everybody's going to uh, take a hold of their shirt around somewhere in the middle of their belly and you're just going to give a pull on that shirt. Pull the shirt straight down. Mm -hmm. And as you pull the shirt straight down, feel all the different areas in which you feel the shirt move, whether it's pulling from your back, from your front. Okay, now, leaving your fingers on that spot, 
about two inches above there, I want you to take a hold with the other hand and just hold on and don't move that piece. Now, once again with the other hand, the original hand, pull straight down and continue to pull. Do you see how everything pulls in a different direction now? Right. Okay, well the second hand is, is, is symbolizing a restriction, an adhesion, something that's causing the, a kink in the fascia, so to speak. Right. And it's not allowing and it's blocking the movement, so the body has to move in a different way to compensate. We all have joints throughout our body, and the joints are supposed to function in a free range of motion that they're supposed to be space in the joints. For example, if my hand represents the hip, and then this hand comes in as the femur, uh, our leg bone, and it's up in that hip socket, and it's supposed to be able to move in different directions. But as our muscles get tighter, or if there's a restriction or a kink in the fascia, it starts to reduce that space because it's pulling on the bones and causing less and less space. Now, that range of motion in the joint is limited. And now we've got a problem of bone degeneration, chips, not to mention the limited range of motion of the leg, requiring the body to pull in other muscles to simply walk, sit, and move. Right. So it's a constant kinetic change of how, how our body is supposed to work. There's an ideal balance between everything. And with every step we take, every exercise we do, every inappropriate position that we sleep in, we're causing restrictions and tightness and kinks physically. Now add in the emotional part of our day and our feelings uh, emanating. I mean, everybody knows when somebody, you can tell when somebody's angry, their face switches up, their shoulders come up, somebody's sad or doesn't want to be recognized or, you know, leaning forward, slumping forward. Everything manifests physically in our body. Yeah. And once we're aware of that and the importance of that, that's the first thing you have to realize. I mean, everybody yells at uh, girls, stand up straight, you know, when it, and then the kids stand up straight and they spend all the time over forward. Well, why are they over forward? Are they lazy? Is there something physically wrong? Or is it an emotional reason they don't want to be seen? The body will tell you exactly what's going on if you take a second step back and pay attention to it. But I like people to realize, for the most part, it's sort of like a summarization of the fascia, is that when you have issues, you have pain, try to step back and not just think solely where the pain is. Think about your whole body. What did you, what did, what did, what did you do to call, before the pain happens? Did it be something being pulled from somewhere else? Is, is, is your back hurting you because you have any issues? Um, or is it just you've had a bad day and things are manifesting? If you take a step back, instead of going for those painkillers that the doctors are very quickly going to give you to deal with it, try to take a step back and breathe and look at the big picture. See the forest for the trees and see what else might be causing the pain. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Marjorie. I think that's, uh, that's really key for people to, to think outside just the one area of pain. Uh, in fact, in the Comfy blog, I've done a bunch of articles just specifically actually about that, about how pain in the back sometimes comes from muscles in the front. And But with the fascia piece, it just it, it's a whole other dimension of, uh, to see the body and uh, to really understand how much, like just with that shirt example alone, how much something over here might affect something over here and, and how everything just fits together. So uh, thanks so much for your description on fascia. Uh, I'd really like to do another uh, video with you soon about... Um, about the scar tissue release, which specifically you and I did training uh, on, uh, you trained me with, and um, active isolated stretching as well, because these are both modalities that, pleasure. yeah, absolutely. Okay, Marjorie, uh, thanks again, and thank, thank you from, you. you're in uh, New York, is that right? Where, right? where in New York are you? Uh, I'm actually on Long Island, over in Wausau. Okay, and, and uh, I, you know, for any of the massage therapists I have that, that check out the Comfy blog regularly, I'd like to highly recommend Marjorie. Uh, she's a great teacher, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of stories, a lot of great examples from her own practice. And um, as far as taking clients, you are taking clients if, if anyone's watching yeah. from your area. And my private practice as well. Okay, and your website to, so they can find you? Uh, the private practice website would be www.aesthetiquebreak.com and the teaching website for the therapists out there and practitioners is just brookseminars.com. Brook Seminars, and that's Brook without an E. That's right. Brooke without an e seminars.com. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Marjorie. Great to see you, Greg. Thank you.